Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and as many of you know yesterday I did a complete full reinstall of Microsoft Flight Simulator which means now it's time to start getting my mods and add-ons back in. And I figured this was a great opportunity to do another mods and add-ons and tools video as I came across a couple of things that really caught my attention. We're going to do a couple of reviews today and we're also going to be showing off some neat tools that I found uh, that I have been very impressed with. So stay tuned because I'm thinking that you guys are going to like a lot of the things that are in this video. So up first on our list today is add-ons linker. Um, I have been using this for quite a while. I was just starting to have a debate of whether or not I was sticking with add-ons linker or modman FX uh, for this new install and add-ons linker came out today and won the pie once again. And again, this is not to discredit any of them. Add-ons linker, add-ons locator, add-ons collector, modman FX, they're all fantastic work. I think it just comes down to preference. Um, it really does because they've all done a great, great job with these tools and we're all very grateful for them um, so please nobody take that as a discredit from one to the other it is not by any means stick strictly preference anyway so mods add-ons linker um, it is my favorite and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the change log up here for you guys today I'm gonna I'm not gonna go through everything I'm just gonna let you guys feel free to pause the screen and read this at this point um, so you can see why I've made the changes I've made otherwise the videos just get too long so let's go ahead and check out what it looks like today so here it is once again you can see for those of you who've used it before it already looks a bit cleaner there's been some refinement to the gui and to the ui and how it looks but my understanding is this thing does a ton more for example we have the grid view here that can now be opened and moved around separately it gives you a whole lot more information again i'm just going to sort of cruise through it feel free to pause it if you guys want to check out something specifically it tells you where the locations of the folders are i mean this is really awesome create a uh, creator name and you can put in the url here if you wish to do so which makes it a lot easier to update them and that's something that i will be working on later on down the road um, over the next day or two as um, i have found that really helpful since i started creating that excel sheet that i have uh, with all of my mods so fantastic work I'm, i i love this software it really works so great um, you can refresh all the mod status uh, bring up enable all your mods disable all your mods you can restore last save selection from memory um, save a current selection meaning that so you can create presets essentially um perfect example right there if you wanted to have let me think of an example here let's say you didn't want to have all of your mods installed all the time all at once let's say you wanted to create some um, scenario based installations so let's say you had um the caribbean islands all right let's, let's start there you had all of the third party apps and everything and scenery that make the caribbean islands just look as great as you can all right um, but you're only going to be flying a specific aircraft maybe you're only flying the h-135 out there so that's the only really time that you want the h-135 you could install all of your caribbean island scenery install the h-135 and then save that as a preset and so then when you want to just load all those, you don't have to come back through all of your sceneries. Let's say you have hundreds of sceneries. You don't have to go back through all of those and check them one by one, right? You can just load a preset, boom, all those particular add-ons for that particular section are in and you're on your way. Um, and then of course you can apply and manage presets. So deleting, expand all. So you can open everything up. And the nice thing that I think I like the most about add-ons linker, I think this is the one that takes the cake for me and has been, and someone else had mentioned something similar, um, was is the folder structure. Okay, this folder structure is my folder structure, and I'll show you what I'm meaning here. So let's pay attention, for example, to aircraft here. If we go to aircraft, there's the aircraft folder, and then you have my EMB 110. Let's open up the EMB 110. Okay, there's all the files that are inside the EMB 110. If I had more folders breaking down, you know, 
however I wanted to go. I'd go as many steps as I want to go, and add-ons linker will also go as many direct step directories as you need to go. Um, so you can really organize things very, very nicely with add-ons linker. And I don't know if that's necessarily something that was not an option in, like, for example, Modman. Um, maybe I just didn't take the time to learn how to do it correctly, but this is something that is definitely a, uh, a big grabber for me. I'm, I'm real big on file organization. I drive myself crazy when I don't do it. Um, so it's a really helpful tool. So with that in mind, um, and there's a couple other options here, show gallery add-ons and thumbnails. So you can sit here and click on this for a second. Let's just hang tight. Boom. Here's all of our, <laughs> this is too cool. So I don't know if this is new or if I just missed it before, but this is slick. Look at this. So what this is, all the mods that I'm currently looking at. And so it takes the thumbnail image that you would see in Microsoft Flight Simulator and displays, and then it tells you what it is and whether or not it's enabled. What happens if we click it? Okay, so it doesn't look like anything. So you can't enable it or, ah, <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> okay, so if you just right click on it, you can hit enable this add-on. So for example, let's find um, one that I'm definitely going to be adding here. Uh, obviously our H135, we're gonna be talking about this today as it went through an update. Uh, unhandled exception. Okay, so it wasn't crazy about that. So the guy could be a bug. So I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna disable that, leave that as is. But this is still really handy, and you can see where they're going with it. And I don't know that the add-on didn't apply correctly. It's just one of those things that I'd rather just wait. Um, but uh, this is. Look at this. I mean, there's almost a picture for everything. Obviously, the scenery gets a little bit different. Um, and again, the thumbnail has to exist in the folder in order for it to exist here. So. Um, that's pretty cool. That is really handy. Let's see what else we got here. Um, and then open add-ons map. That's got me curious. Let this finish loading here. What is this? If I'm not mistaken, okay, so it's like, okay, okay, okay. So it's got the location of all the add-ons that I have in my folder and where they will impact. So let's see here, let's try to click on that one. What's this one? FTTJ, but I don't recall installing that. So, oh, it's in there. Yep, it's all here. Okay, cool. So that tells you something. Oh, I know what this is. This is the basic airport layout. So anyway, you guys can see what it does. It's pretty handy. So it lets you know what you've got in the different regions. Then you can click whatever's highlighted here. It even tells you the mod that it's a part of. So that is slick. That's really awesome. I'm really, I'm really impressed by this. Um, show labels. What does that do? Ooh, doggy. Look at that. That's a really impressive view. Look at that. See how far we can get. So it's just pulling right from Google Maps or whatever map service it's using. Bing Maps looks like. Wow. Okay. That's handy, dudes. <laughs> and dudettes. That is, that is slick. So add-ons linker for me is the way to go. I mean, I'm going to have to play around with a lot of this more. Um, this is pretty awesome. Uh, let's see. Can I... Yep, cool. So with that being in mind, let's go ahead and talk about, while we're here, some of the mods that I'm going to be installing here. Although these, oh, it's because they're not in a folder. Never mind. I know exactly why they're like that. All right. So I do want Salty 747. We want the 78. Well, actually, hold on. Let's hold off on this, and I'm going to tell you why in just a minute here. Let's pull the H135, and it looked like it did install, but it didn't do a check mark, and that's probably what the unhandled exception there was. So it looks like it did work. Let's check out the next tool I want to show you guys before I start installing things, because I think you guys are really going to like this, and I can't wait to see this next app take off. All right, so... Here is the next app that I stumbled on a couple of days ago, and it was sort of what made pushed me into completing the installation um, or the reinstall. 
MSF Community Downloader. Dudes. Uh, this is awesome. So, currently supported, we have the working title CJ4, G1000, G3000, G3000 touchscreen, A32 and X, the stable release. So, I won't be using that portion uh, just because I use development. But, Heavy Division 787, uh, Salty 747, uh, as Gary Airlines liveries, the Fret G36 project, uh, that's one that I use it myself. JP Logistics Cessna 152, probably the best Cessna 152 add-on you could add, even above the 172 add-ons. Um, this is a really, really great, JP went like above and beyond really tweaking that Cessna 152. I know it's for a lot of us, you know, myself, I prefer the more powerful engines, but if you're looking for something that's as realistic as you can get for Microsoft Flight Simulator today, um, this is an incredible add-on. I highly recommend it. And then the Pimark um, PMS 550 and GNS 530. So uh, main functions, add-on listing, install, update, remove add-ons, community folder auto detection, add, edit, and delete custom package. This is beautiful. The roadmap, what he's got looking to do. Import, export, custom packages, online repository of custom packages. Oh, nice. Uh, community driven, meaning that the community will be able to update these uh, this library here. That's that's fantastic. Fantastic. Um, and then enable disable packages to remove them from the listing and be able to set a subfolder per package for link, add-on linker users or linker users. Very cool. So let's check this out because I want to see this one in action. So when you download it, you just get this executable. I put it inside of a folder here. So I just open that up, launch it. And let's see what we get. This is the first time I've ever seen it. All right, GitHub and Patreon Discord. Okay, so it's cool. It gives you links. Make sure you guys hook them up. And let's see what we got. So we have the CJ4. I absolutely want the CJ4. Um, I'm curious, is there a way to see... Oh, settings. Let's go to settings first. <laughs> it absolutely found it. Well done. All right, so that works beautifully. You can reset the settings if you need to. It's fantastic. So let's install the CJ4. Installed, and let's check our community folder. Everything's about uh, double checking everything, right? Uh, so let's see. Oh, I need to re add that to the quick list here. Um, what am I looking for? Custom folders, packages. And you know what, let's just move that up. Hang on a second, let's pin that to quick access. Sorry, you guys probably like to see what's going on here. So here we go, packages, community, and there it is. Beautiful. And check on the file structure, file structure is absolutely correct. It's got the title, and boom, we're set. So, fantastic. Obviously, I want the G1000. Let's see if we can do multiple. We want the G3000. We want the G3000 touchscreen. I'm not going to do the fly-by-wire A320 because I want the development version. But the 787, Salty 747, version 3.0. Uh, as Gary Airlines, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Why not? Looks like there's quite a few in there. G36, God, just grabs it instantly. JP Cessna 152, and the 550 and 530, or the 50 and 530. Beautiful. All right, and looks like we're just waiting on the Asgari Airlines to finish up, so I'll go ahead and let that roll. That's totally fine. But fantastic, guys. Think about... Um, when we see things like the H-135, I hope the H-135 makes it to the, to the list here. Um, I'm trying to think about some other ones. You know, I know all these off the top of my head normally. Um, but I'm sure you guys can already see, and we can add a package. Let's, let's check this out. Create new package. Um, all right, let's go to my installs here. And I don't know how well this is going to work or not. The DA-62, that's a big one. DA-62, I love this aircraft. Okay. Oh, I actually have the current version for once. That's amazing. Okay, so let's see what we got. Let's just see. I may not be able to do this yet, so we'll see. The name of the package folder must be unique among all other packages. Okay, yeah. Makes sense. The name displayed in the left panel. Well, no need to change that. DA62. Well, let's call it the X. Let's call it the X. Okay. 
And this one, let's give it... Uh, Oh, okay, never mind, here we go. The full name displayed under the name in the right panel. So let's do, I'm gonna copy it straight from the website. And then I wanna do buy Mr. Tommy Mixer here. There we go. And uh, I'm not gonna worry about that. Well, here, I guess we'll do uh, just DA62, sort of self-explanatory up there, but improvement. Uh, I see. So I don't know if we have his GitHub here. Let me just look. I don't know if he's even got a GitHub. Okay, so it has to be somewhere with a GitHub repository. I see. So the GitHub owner. Okay. And then the name of the repository. Wow, so there's a lot to this. Not too bad, though. So actually... All right, so I don't know anyone off the top of my head that I can complete this with, um, and I need to learn how to spell improvement. I don't know why that just drives me crazy, even though I'm about to cancel it. Um, but anyway, you guys can see how cool this can be. If you can gather all this information, you can even create your own packages and have an auto-updater. Ah, very freaking cool tool. Yep, I'm really glad that uh, we talked about this one first before I started adding my add-ons into add-on linker. Which is where we are now. So now I'm going to go back through and I'm going to add some more add-ons um, from add-ons linker. And then we'll jump into the sim and talk about a few other updates today. All right. So let's talk about the next one on the list. The next mod on the list for today is going to be the pushback uh, toolbar tool by Ambitious Pilot. Um, this is absolutely fantastic. It's got a new version out. Parking brake has been adjusted, so it now works with the A32NX again. But let's could just take a look at, for a second. Okay, it bypasses the need for ATC. It bypasses the need for any third-party application like Pushback Helper or Pushback Recorder, any of those, which are all fantastic pieces of software and have their place. Um, but this is really simple. It requires you to launch nothing else, so therefore you don't have to step outside the simulator. Okay, we can go to aircraft. We can go to the jetway. Get the jetway going. We can open up the cargo doors. We can open up the aft door. We can call our baggage and catering services. We can call our EPU. I mean, and the nice thing is you can still take this window and take it off screen and work it. Okay, so really, really fantastic work. Um, the ability to be able to integrate, I love how it's so lightning and everything and yet the clouds are still pretty broken um, but anyway I digress um, the fuel issue was fixed where fuel trucks were not showing up in many situations um, it still takes a minute for fuel to get here by the way don't expect fuel to take a while uh, um, or to be instant it, it's not it takes a second to actually get to the aircraft um, but anyway really fantastic tool you can control the parking brake you can go forward or reverse tug direction you simply use a slider and move it back and forth uh, you can also use the rudders to steer the tug is what it says here and then here is how you, you would hit start pushback and then you would adjust this slider and the you know basically think of this slider here as the throttle okay so start pushback great tug comes up hooks up and then once you start moving this forward the aircraft starts moving you know as long as you release your parking brake really really fantastic piece of software link down in the description below guys it is a game changer it is very very nice very very convenient and it bypasses all the nonsense from trying to use atc because that's just don't even get me started on the default pushback utility um but anyway, not one of their best moves but uh, anyway so again this is the newest version that has just released today there's been a bunch of fixes to it um i really really recommend this it is absolutely a game changer on a side note real quick another one that i do want to mention that doesn't come up very often and there will be a link to it down in the description below is notice the handlebar this thing right up here okay there is a mod that actually disables that um and i will be uh, having a link to it down in the description below i forgot to install it uh just a moment ago so that was my fault, um, and I didn't really want to restart the simulator just for that. But check the link description below. If you guys don't like this little white triangle that pops up every time you move your mouse, there will be a link down the description below for a mod that removes it. You still move your mouse up here, and you'll still get the menus. You just don't get this white uh, handlebar is what it's called, uh, ruining your screenshots and videos. All right, so let's move on to our next segment. 
All right, so next on our list here, as you guys saw, is the H135. It went through yet another update. I'm gonna pull up the change log so you guys can feel free to pause the screen. It's version 1.3, here's what you're interested in. Um, quite a few fixes, flight model adjustments, uh, automatic flight control, adjust turn coordination at speed, reduced yaw authority at speed. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Fix yaw jitter at high speeds over 40 knots. So I'm kind of curious about that. And then uh, flying backwards will now be more likely to yaw due to uneven relative wind. Um, so some flight model changes, some multiplayer changes. You will now see the correct identifier for the aircraft. Um, we are going to take it up for a quick spin, just a quick fly around the area. Nothing too crazy. See if there's any noticeable. You guys know I've been following this project for quite a long time. So we're going to let it finish starting up. The sound has definitely gone through an improvement or change of some sort. This is the default sound. And it sounds great. So there is definitely a change that has happened there. I noticed the transition was very, very smooth. But anyway, let's go ahead and take her up to the skies. I'm not going to worry about track IR or anything like that today. We're just doing a quick tour around the the area here to see how she performs today. So I'm slowly adding collective. You can see her rocking. So I'm going to counter with some left torque. Now, you know what else I did not check first, so hang on a second. I'm going to set it back down for a minute. It feels like it's in the advanced mode, but I did not double check that, and this is a brand new installation, so. Oof! Like dropping a piano. Nope, it was not. Now we are. Alright, so let's try that again. Yeah, that's, that's what I was expecting. A little harder to control now. Alright, let's power up. still see that weird vertical bounce in it and I don't know what that's about. That is the one thing that has persisted through many renditions of this. Whoa! What happened? I think I got... Uh oh. We have a problem here guys. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Easy. 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 Oh. I did something I should not have done. Let's get that torque down. that about I made it very angry right there for a second <laughs> I think I got a little too much bank in there okay so yes um, I am noticing now that the rudder pedals or the anti torque pedals are much less uh, effective now that we're up and moving um, which my understanding of helicopter performance is much more accurate. Um, you should be able to get... Uh, basically, once the, once the aircraft gets up and moving, um, it should fly more like a standard airplane once you're in that... once you get enough forward momentum. Um, now, once you slow back down again, then, you know, the anti-torque 
uh, pedals become much more uh, prudent to what you're doing. Like I'm having to put a ton of left torque into this in order to make it do what it's doing now. Um, I'm using I'm only using the cyclic to keep us from hitting the trees. That's it. Um, all that was left rudder. And see there now we're we're back to center and I pushed it too far and kicked my rudder pedals over. Oops. So, um, definitely, once again, another major improvement to this aircraft. Um, I'm really impressed with the sound. The sound sounds significantly different this time. Like, maybe I'm just losing my brain or something, but I don't feel like it sounded like this the last time I flew it. <laughs> um, guys, just an FYI. Um, as many of you know... Hopefully some of you watched my video yesterday about reinstalling Microsoft Flight Simulator. I can tell you right now there is an improvement from doing so. Um, and again, as somebody else pointed out, the download optimization was merely compressed better. That doesn't mean the file size itself changed, which makes more sense to me. Um, I think it was just a verbiage that was on the patch notes that was a little confusing and I misread it and understood it. Um, but uh, I will say regardless of that point... Um, I have noticed a massive improvement in the simulator since uh, reinstalling yesterday. Um, with that being said, I am a little concerned as to why that was a necessary step. Um, what's happening with the patches and the way that information is being laid down that that was a necessity. I am seeing a weird reflection on the water. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, some of that could be from the glass canopy. Um, maybe not being optimized. I don't know. Um, but it's running very, very smooth. Um, as hopefully many of you guys can see, I don't think we've ran into a stutter yet. The weird bouncing you're seeing the helicopter doing, like, if you watch it very closely, like, sort of watch the left side of the screen so you can see what it's doing. There's me moving the cyclic, and like that right there. That was not me. That's just something that it's... And this is something the H-135 has done for a very long time. Um, look at this. So, anyways, I caught myself going on a little bit of a rant, so I decided to uh, end the segment here. So, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the final portion of today's video, which I think you guys are really, really going to like. So, next here we have the Icon A5 Improvement Mod by the, again, High Performance Group. I'll go ahead and scroll down, guys. We have an update just happened today, and here is the improvements that are uh, brought with this particular package. Really awesome functionality, especially for an aircraft that's uh, a lot of fun to fly that unfortunately I have been missing out on. So let's go ahead and we're just going to jump into it here. And I'm just going to do an auto start. I don't worry about, uh, I haven't taken the time to really learn all of the aircraft yet. I just sort of got tooled around with it uh, earlier this morning and took a quick flight and was like, wow. Um, but it's got the uh, G3000 touchscreen by Working Title, so everything is really handy and easy to use. Um, I'm really impressed with it. Now, we only have VOR01 at the moment because I think that's all I have in it. <clears throat> but you ha still have your bearing pointers. I mean, this is just great functionality for something so simple. Uh, transponder, yep, we're going to leave that on as that. We're going to set it on or altitude following. It even rotates everything down here so we can control it down here if we want. But uh, anyway, so kind of a fun little uh, a little plane. So let's go ahead and take it up and see what it's like. They've added some horsepower improvements to it. Let's get our pushback window going. Boop. Pop that parking brake. Go back to the pushback. Start pushback. We're going to get our tug going backwards. Turn this beautiful birdie around. I'm telling you I love this pushback tool. It's fantastic. And then when we're ready, we just slow the tug down. And also has this hold option now, too, I forgot to mention earlier, that allows you to temporarily pause the pushback. And we'll just end the pushback now, set that parking brake back up, and let's jump back in the seat. Not sure how I got so close in here. There we go. Alright, let's have some fun. So let's see here. Uh, nav lights on, taxi lights on. Well, the nav light is bright. Uh, let's see what else we got. Water rudder, I love it. 
Um, and let's see here. We got our master switches turned on. All that's good. Still remembering where that parking brake was. Nope, that's not the parking brake. No, it's got one. Maybe it didn't have one. Am I tripping? Guess we'll just add some power here. No, it's definitely got a parking brake. Why can't I remember where it is? Bilge, heat, water rudder, taxi, land, gear, flaps. Oh, I lost. I literally can't find the darn parking brake. Let's see. What is it? Uh, nope. That starts to push back. Well, here. You know what? That'll work. Fine. Release the parking brake. <laughs> Cheated. All right. Let's go. Ooh. We lose a lot of rudder control here. All right, so let's see, what do we got? Do, do, do. Default turning in Microsoft aircraft is really frustrating. This thing should be turning on a nickel. <sighs> okay. Let's get somewhat centered up here. Alright. Let's just rock and roll here. Real short field takeoff. Pull that power back a bit. Ooh, she has no problem climbing. Let's make sure the gear actually went up. It did. Good. She flies much like you would expect. You know, more like a kite than anything, uh, very light in the wings. Definitely uh, reacts very quickly uh, to uh, weather elements, wind, etc., turbulence. This improvement mod adds some uh, pretty nice and welcomed horsepower. You guys know what we're really here to try. We're going to try out the water landing. But uh, it's a cool looking aircraft. Fun aircraft to go tooling around in, definitely. And like I said, I don't think I've... Uh, I sat in the default once just long enough to check out it and what the difference was before the mod. I um, just did a quick takeoff. It was much more sluggish. Uh, like I said, definitely lacked the power. I know nothing about seaplanes, but I can't wait for us to get an official one. Um, like a third party, full, fully modeled. But uh, we're going to try this right now. It's the one thing I have not tried yet. Figured I'd share that with you guys. So I'm assuming we need to make sure the water rudders set. Ah! Does it actually show it? Yeah, there it is. Okay, let's see how bad this goes. I'm gonna come in super shallow. some flaps I'm 
More flaps. Should I put the gear down? Kidding. Kidding, kidding. This just seems so unnatural. We should not be here. Float it. Float it. Oh! Okay, so I'm guessing that that was an extremely unrealistic uh, water landing as I have a feeling with the way that I approached that, especially uh, trying that from the external view, uh, that would have gone very, very badly tipping that nose into the water like that. But <laughs> still kind of cool. So let's uh, let's see what a takeoff from is like. It's just very simple. Whoa! That just sort of pops up, huh? Very cool. Anyways, guys, really neat mod. Fun little thing to mess around in. Um, you know, I think this would be a really cool little, you know, if you want to tour around Hawaii or, you know, the Caribbean islands, which is where we are here, you know, find some random out in the middle of nowhere runway, do a takeoff, go explore some beachheads and things. Um, I think this would be a really awesome one to try out in VR. That's definitely going to be my next step with this particular aircraft. Um, and that will also be another test coming up, is testing VR performance since the reinstall and seeing if anything has gotten better or worse. So, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found some useful add-ons and tools today. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care, folks.